Okay, so how do we do the top deals by cluster analysis? How do we interpret these clusters? I showed you a way to do that in Excel in a previous video. So uh, there's uh, the equivalent way in R. So remember these videos are also just about sort of getting to understand Excel and R. Even if you think that you're not going to be doing analyses like these, say you plan on being sort of a creative in the advertising industry, uh, chances are you're still going to have to run some basic analyses uh, a lot of times in Excel. So being a good user and understanding that these tools are out there is very important. So, um, sorry, that was just an, an aside, but quickly, how do we get that top deals by cluster? It's kind of a funky looking command, but it's going to accomplish the same thing that we did when we did the sum if statement in Excel in the previous video when we were doing the top deals by cluster. Uh, so we're going to call it wine data dot cluster counts and to that data frame we will assign a transposed data frame and we're going to use the aggregate function. And if you want full explanations of each of these functions, you can always just Google them. If you just say like aggregate uh, and then put the little parentheses like this and then search for that. So if you look this, if you just like Google that and also R, you'll get the documentation for the uh, function. And in that, we will put wine data dot transposed. And for the second argument, we will say by equals list. And we are going to list out the cluster counts. Or excuse me, we're going to list out the wine data dot cluster dollar sign cluster for these cluster column and we are going to sum those right if they match up and we only care about well we care about all the rows but we only care about columns 2 through 33 for the 32 offers and that should be it whoops what did I do wrong error in aggregate dot data dot frame wine data dot oh I spelled it wrong wine data dot clusers you may have noticed that. Type in wine data dot clusters. And so now we should have a, some more output, wine data dot stored in wine data dot cluster counts. If we take a look at that, we see a uh, table that looks a lot like the top deals by cluster that we saw in the Excel file. Okay, but we still don't have the metadata about all of the deals off to the left, and we're going to need that to make sense of these uh, purchase frequencies or these top deals. So why don't we create another data frame called top deals by cluster, and to that we will assign, um, we're going to use another function called cbind, which will uh, you know, m sort of like merge two data frames together, and we will bind together our wine data. And remember earlier, we uh, didn't care about all of the columns. We didn't care about the first seven columns. So in this case, we want to pull in those seven columns, and we want to merge that with wine data dot cluster counts and now we have our top deals by cluster and if we just say look at rows 1 through I guess 33 and let's say we look at the first 14 columns whoops what did I do wrong there undefined columns selected. Well, why don't we just look at top deals by cluster altogether? Okay, we have the whole thing. Oh, that's because we have we don't even have 14 columns to go with. So, let's say we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 
8, 9, 10, 11. So if we would have just changed that to 11, we would have gotten the same thing. Okay. All righty. We can continue. So now what we do is we can just sort these uh, based on uh, the frequency with which a particular deal was purchased by individuals in a cluster. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is the eighth column over here. So we've got offer one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so we just type in top deals by cluster and order that. Type in top deals by cluster again and we're going to sort that by the eighth column and we need to put a co uh, comma here because we're just talking about the rows there and not the columns and so now you can see that it has reordered the data frame and from uh, in descending order right and you look over here at the one starting off with a nine you can see, okay, cluster one, the most popular offer was Chardonnay, followed by Merlot, then Champagne, then Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, we're not really seeing a whole lot of commonalities between here, uh, between these. It looks like the Chardonnay and the Merlot both were from Chile, uh, and the Champagne was from France, so it's kind of hard to see any particular pattern for this cluster see if I want to do the same thing I can just type up and let's sort it by the second cluster so that would be column 9 and we get the same thing we can see a Malbec here's our minimum quantity 6 so again we see that sort of cheapskate cluster that we talked about in the video uh, where we did this in Excel we can see the same cluster defined there look at column 10 for the third cluster all right okay here is our Pinot Noir group you can see that everybody there purchased Pinot Noirs and let's do the fourth and final cluster so that'll be column 11 and you can see here is our sweet sparkling wine cluster Okay, so I hope that helps you build up some intuitions about what's going on behind the scenes when you do k-means clustering. And in the upcoming videos in this module, we'll talk about how you can actually use these cluster assignments in different kinds of marketing efforts, and also what other types of techniques people use in segmentation studies.